Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to practice solving basic linear equations. Now, uh, this particular equation could be rather easy to solve if you had a calculator, but it becomes more interesting if we put our calculator away. So try to solve this without a calculator. I don't want to give you too many hints here because I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this on your own. But again, we're going to be solving this basic linear equation for the variable m. So if you know how to do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to solve this step by step. Also, if you need math help uh, with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about basic algebra. And uh, some of you might be saying, well, if I had a calculator, I could do this problem. Well, you're going to, there's definitely plenty of times uh, when you have to solve equations in a, a math course without the aid of a calculator. So you want to get used to doing um, a lot of problems without your calculator, which means you're going to have to understand something about fractions and decimals. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. What is m equal to? Well, m is equal to the fraction 11 thirds. So if you got something different than this, or if you change this to a mixed number, you'll know whether in fact you got an equivalent uh, correct answer. But if you got this right, that is excellent. Matter of fact, let's give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can celebrate your success with your family that you know how to solve a basic linear equation without the aid of a calculator. They'll be very, very impressed with that information indeed. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get into the problem, the actual solution. So what do we have to do here? Well, you have to make a decision, okay? So here we have a fraction and here we have a decimal. So we either have to work with all fractions or all decimals. Now, uh, some of you might think it's easier to convert, let's say this 3 fourths into a decimal. You have 0.75m. Minus 1 is equal to 1.75. If you felt that was easier and you did that approach, that's perfectly fine. But for me, I'm going to suggest that most of you out there uh, convert uh, uh, this decimal here, 1.75, into a uh, fraction. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, kind of approach uh, the problem this way. We're going to work with all fractions. Of course, that just makes everyone excited because they love fractions. Now, if any of this so far is kind of complicated, if you're like, ah, I need help with this, I'm going to suggest uh, checking out like my pre-algebra course in my math help program that will definitely help you out. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that go over basic equations as well. All right, so let's take a look at this decimal here, 1.75. And what we need to recognize is that 0.75 is equivalent to the fraction 3 fourths, okay? And even more so, we need to understand that 1.75 is the same thing as 1 plus a 0.75. If we added up these two numbers, we would get 1.75. So we just want to kind of uh, pull these two parts of this number apart so we can take the 0.75 um, part and write it as a fraction. Now, if you just uh, said, oh, well, this is just equal to one and three fourths, that's perfectly fine because that's where I'm going as well. Now, some of you might be saying, well, how would I know that 0.75 is equal to three fourths? Well, there's some uh, common decimals values that you should know their fraction, uh, the equivalent fraction for those respective decimals. Things like 0.25, uh, which of course is one fourth, 0.5 is one half, 0.75, uh, three fourths, etc. So you know some of these more very very basic and common uh, decimal values you should hopefully know. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. I'm going to erase this right here. So we have three fourths m minus one is equal to one plus three fourths, which of course is the same thing as one and three fourths. So now finally we have an equation here, all in fractions. All right, so what do we need to do? Well, when you're solving an equation, 
uh, basic linear equation in algebra, what you want to do is get all your variable terms on the left-hand side. So you can see here the only variable term we have is 3 fourths m. It's already on the left-hand side, but you want to get all your numbers on the right. And here we have this negative 1. We need to kind of get that over to the other side of the equation. So how do we make that happen? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so anytime you want to move anything from one side of an equation to another side of an equation, this is a really, really important algebra concept. But effectively, the, uh, the kind of the general rule is you can do anything you want to an equation as long as you do it both uh, equally to both sides. So if I want to get rid of this negative 1 here on this side, I'm like, you know, I don't want any um, have any numbers on this side of the equation. I just want my variable term here. Well, I can uh, accomplish that by adding a 1 to it because a negative 1 plus 1 is 0, basically makes this disappear from this side. But if I add a 1 to this side of the equation, I must add a 1 to the other side of the equation to keep this in balance. Always think of an, an equation as kind of like a teeter-totter or a seesaw, whichever you might, or a scale, however you want to think about it. So if you put a 1 right here, obviously this is going to get that scale. It's going to be heavier on this side. But if we put a 1 right there, it stays in balance. Okay, So that is a main concept of solving equations in algebra. You could do whatever you want to both sides of the equation as long as you do it equally. Okay, so, or you could do, whatever, let me just say that again. You could do whatever you want for the most part, uh, to an equation as long as you do it equally to both sides. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add down in a column manner. So 3 fourths m plus nothing is 3 fourths m. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. We don't need to write a 0. That just kind of disappears. And then 1 and 3 fourths plus a 1 is going to be 2 and 3 fourths. All right, so this is where we're at right now. We have 2... I'm sorry, 3 fourths m is equal to 2 and 3 fourths. So let's go ahead and take this now to the next step. Okay, so basically we're down to what we call a one-step equation. Effectively, you just need to, uh, to do one thing here, and we can solve for the variable m. But we need to make our life a little bit easier here because we're going to have to do some multiplication and or division. Uh, depends on how you uh, think about this particular problem. But here I have a proper fraction which is where the denominator is bigger than the numerator, but this is a mixed number fraction, okay? So in other words, I have two and three fourths. I need to convert this thing or write this thing as an improper fraction. So how do I do that? We just take four, uh, if you recall, four times two is eight, and then you add three, okay? So eight plus three, of course, is 11, and you're gonna write that over four. So you need to understand how to work with fractions and write a mixed number fraction as an improper fraction. Basic, basic uh, skills that are, uh, you know, absolutely critical for your success in algebra, i.e. working with fractions. Again, if you need to brush up on how to solve basic equations and how to master fractions, just go directly to my pre-algebra course. You'll be very happy that you did. All right, so here, let's just go ahead and take a look where we're at. Now we finally got this equation to 3 fourths m is equal to 11 fourths. Okay, these are the same thing, but now we have this as an improper fraction. Now, how do we solve for m? Well, we want to get m by itself. So uh, basically, we want to solve for m, right? m is equal to whatever the solution is. But really, there's a 1 in front of that m, 1m, but we just write that as m. So how can I accomplish, I have a 3 fourths m, how can I get this into a 1? What can I do to 3 fourths to make it into 1? Well, just remember, if you multiply by the reciprocal, take whatever whatever fraction is in front of this variable and flip it upside down, that, of course, would be 4 thirds. And then when you multiply, or look what happens. You're going to have uh, 4 times 3 is 12 over 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided by 12 is 1, Okay, or all of these cross cancel. So now you're going to have 1m. That's what you want. Okay, That's what we uh, want to accomplish. But what was the rule that I just mentioned? about algebra, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same thing. So here I'm multiplying this side of the equation by 4 thirds, so I must multiply this side of the equation by 4 thirds as well. And when we do this, you can see the 4s cross cancel, and it just leaves us with 11 over 3. So m is equal to 11 thirds. Okay, so hopefully 
you know, you're like, oh, okay, I get this. And if you started off this problem confused, but now you feel a little bit more confident, well, that's why I make these videos. But remember, you watching me solve a math problem is not going to help you get better uh, in math yourself. Okay, this is very much like, kind of like to use the uh, analogy or metaphor of if you wanted to improve in basketball, would you watch great basketball players on TV? Is that going to make you better? Of course not, right? You actually have to go uh, practice. Now, how many times would you practice? If you shot the ball once and it went into the hoop, you're like, yay, I'm perfect at basketball. Every time I shoot the basketball, I will make a shot. No, of course not. You need to practice and you need to practice a wide ver uh, variety of different type of challenging shots. Math is no different. It is a skill. Okay, so unless you practice this stuff and a wide range of type of problems that you need to know, you're not going to improve. So you can improve, but you have to do the work yourself. So hopefully you're motivated to take the next step. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.